Praise you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Glory, glory, glory. Turn with me to Matthew, I mean Mark chapter 16, verse 14. Uh, we're gonna, we're, we don't have the baptismal ready this morning, but we're going to have it ready tonight. And so if anybody wants to get baptized tonight, we're going to be able to do that. And here Jesus is talking to his disciples. So I'm a disciple of Christ. I am a disciple of Christ. And afterwards he appeared unto the eleven, as they sat at meat, set to eat, and upbraided them with their unbelief and hardness of heart, because they believed not them which had seen him after he was risen. In other words, he got after them. And he said unto them, Go ye into all the world, say all the world, all the world, and preach the gospel to every creature. That means every person. And he said, He that believeth, that means exercises faith in the word, and is baptized, that means immersed, shall be saved. That means delivered. But he that believeth not shall be damned. And these signs shall follow them that believe in my name. They shall cast out devils. They shall speak with new tongues. They shall take up serpents. And if they drink any deadly thing, it shall not harm them. And they shall lay hands on the sick, and they shall recover. So after that, after then, after the Lord had spoken unto them, he, received, he was received up into heaven and sat on the right hand of God. And they went forth and preached everywhere, the Lord working with them and confirming the word with signs following. So God confirms his word with signs following. Now turn with me now to uh, Romans chapter 6. And we're going to look about this baptism. This baptism is not actually talking about water baptism. Water immersion is talking about our immersion into Jesus Christ. Romans chapter 6, verse 1. What shall we say then? Shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? You see, we're saved or delivered by grace. By grace shall we be saved through faith and not by works, lest any man should boast. But he says, shall we continue in sin that grace may abound? God forbid. How shall we that are dead to sin live any longer there? And don't you know that so many of us as were baptized into Jesus Christ? That means immersed into Jesus Christ. Baptism is immersion. So the true baptism, the Bible says there's one baptism that brings life, and that's our immersion into Jesus Christ. Thank so you. our immersion into Jesus Christ is all what, what water baptism represents. So when we get baptized in water, it represents our immersion into Jesus Christ, which happens before that we actually get baptized in water. Philip was out preaching one day, and God led him to the desert. He'd been, he'd been winning, he was an evangelist. He was been winning souls in the city for God, for Jesus Christ. And then God sent him to the desert. There was one man sitting in the desert. God cares about one person as much yes. as he does about everybody. Amen. God cares about every single person in the world. Amen. Thank you, Lord. So most of the time when Jesus ministered people, he ministered one-on-one. -on -one. And so God cares about each and every person. Know you not that so many of us were, as were baptized into Jesus Christ, were baptized into his death. Therefore, we are buried with him by a baptism or immersion into death. That like as Christ was raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk in newness of life. The Bible says, if any man be in Christ, he is a new creation. Old things are passed away and all things are become new. So I don't live like I used to live. Because I'm redeemed, I'm set free, I'm made whole through Jesus Christ. And he enables me because I'm in him, he's in me. So he enables me to do what he had me to do. Praise you, Father. Therefore we are buried with him by baptism and immersion into death, that like as Christ was raised up from the dead, even by the glory of the Father, even so we should walk, say I should walk, in newness of life. That means I don't live like I used to live. For if we have been planted together in the likeness of his death, we shall also in the likeness of his resurrection. In other words, just as Jesus was raised up in, from the dead in newness of life, we should, when we're raised up out of the water, then that represents us being raised up from, from newness of life as a new creation in Christ Jesus. Knowing this, knows it's important that we know this, 
that our old man is crucified, that old man of sin, the way I used to live, it's crucified with Jesus Christ, that the body of sin might be destroyed, that henceforth and from now on, we should not serve sin. For he that is dead is freed from sin. See, I'm free. Amen. Jesus preached to a bunch of Jewish people. The Bible says that these Jewish people he preached to believed in him. We call those believers. And Jesus said to those Jews who believed in him, he said, if you continue in my words, then are you my disciples indeed, and you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. And that got under, because they were Jewish people. They thought just because they were born as Abraham's de descendants, that they were automatically set free. So they said to him, we've never been in bondage to any man. We are already free. And then Jesus said this, whoever commits sin is the slave of sin. He said, whoever commits sin. So basically he was telling them, if you've committed sin, you're not free. If you're committing sin, you're not free. And the Bible says all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. So we have all, we're all sinners without Jesus. Yes. Jesus came to set us free from sin. And he went on to say, and they were said, oh, we've never been in bondage to any man. We're free, we're free. And Jesus said, whoever commits sin is the slave of sin. And they couldn't say they weren't sinners. So he said, but whoever the Son is set free is free indeed. So Jesus came to destroy the power of sin in our life. In 1 yes. John it says, it says, let no man deceive you. He that doeth righteousness is righteous, even as he is righteous. But he that sinneth is of the devil. And for this purpose was the Son of Man manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. You see, Jesus came to destroy sin in our lives. He, be, he who knew no sin became yes. sin that we might become Thank the you, righteousness Lord. of God through him. Glory. So it's only through Jesus that we can live right. It's only through Jesus that we can truly be holy as he is holy. And the Bible says without holiness no man will see the Lord. So, so we need to really recognize this and believe this because that's what the Bible says. And then God will enable us. When we set our hearts to serve him, he will enable us to live right. Amen. He will enable us to walk free from our old bondages, from these old strongholds that I used to be under. I once was lost, but now I'm found. I used to be blind, but now I see amazing grace. How sweet the sound that delivered a wretch like me, that saved a wretch like me. Hallelujah. Yes. Praise you, Father. Glory. Now, this is not my message, but I'm going to get to it in a minute. <laughs> Good stuff. Amen. Thank you, Hallelujah. So it goes on to say, so we should reckon ourselves indeed to be dead unto sin, but alive unto God through Christ Jesus. Say, I'm dead, I'm dead. to sin, dead. but alive unto God alive. through Christ Jesus. It goes on to say, for the wages of sin is death. Say, the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Jesus is eternal life. As long as we stay in Jesus, as long as we abide in Jesus, we have eternal life. We always have a choice to walk how we want to walk. God never takes away our choice. We have a choice to live for God or to live after the flesh. If I choose to live after the flesh, it says in Romans chapter 6, 7, he said if I choose to live, live after, in Romans chapter, six, Romans chapter 8, if I live after the flesh, I will die. I now will die spiritually. I won't drop dead right then, but I will, I'll be separated from God. But if I, through the Spirit of Christ, if I, through the Spirit of Christ that's in me, if I will crucify or put to death, mortify or put to death the deeds of my flesh, then I'll live. I'll have life. We need to walk in the Zoe life of God that Jesus came to impart to us. He, Jesus was a life giving spirit. The same, he said, in him was life. And the life was the light of God. He said, I've come that you might have this life. And that you might have it in superabundance. Amen. This life of God that was in Christ yes. Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Matter of fact, when he, when he rose from the dead, he went to his apostles. The Bible says he breathed on them. They were born of the Spirit. Boom, just like that. They were born again right there. Thank and you, then he Lord. said, now you need to receive the Holy Ghost. And later they received the Holy Ghost on the day of Pentecost. Hallelujah. And that's the thing we need to receive. Amen. When we have to receive Jesus. Now, you don't have to, but you need to. We Thank should. Thank you, Lord. Yes. Now, turn with me back to Romans chapter 4, because that's actually where my message is today. So that's yeah. two chapters back. We're doing a, we're doing a teaching through Romans, uh, verse by verse. 